All right, let's go ahead and get started with problem number one. We need to factor that. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to 15, add to negative 8. That's going to be negative 5 and negative 3. I'm not going to go any further than that because they're not asking me to solve it. They're just asking me to factor it. Um, on number 2, the only thing I can do is pull out a GCF to start with, and I'm going to be left with x squared minus 4. And then I notice, well, x squared minus 4, that's a, great, that's a difference of two squares. I can factor that further. If I keep the 7, and a difference of two squares, you take the square root of that first term, do a plus and a minus, and the square root of 4 is 2. And that is your final answer. All right, let's go ahead and do this one with slide and divide. 2 times 7 is 14, so I'm going to have x squared minus 22x plus 14. All right, are there two numbers that multiply to give me 14? and add to give me negative 22. Um, I don't think there are, because that would be 1 times 14, 2 times 7. I don't think that one can be factored any further. They tried to trick us on that one. That one is prime. It can't be factored any further. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Number 4 is a difference of 2 squares. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. So I'm going to have 4x, because that's the square root of 16. x squared. Do a plus and a minus. The square root of 49 is 7. All right. We can solve these any way that we want to. I'm thinking the first one. I would like to factor that. Two numbers that multiply to 80 at 18. Um, 8 and 10. Well, this one does say to solve, so then you're going to take each one of those factors and set them equal to 0. So I'm going to get x equals negative 8 and x equals negative 10. And those are my two solutions. Um, on number 6, I could do this with factoring or using the square root. I'm going to use the square root. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And when I do that, I get x squared equals 25. Take the square root of both sides. When I take that square root, I have to use the plus and minus. I'm going to get plus or minus 5. All right, number seven. This one's already factored for us, so we don't have to do any factoring. All you have to do is take each factor and set it equal to zero. Add one to both sides. Divide by five, and you get one-fifth. Add seven to both sides, and you get x equals seven. Two answers. Um, 8, I'm going to go straight to the quadratic formula on this one because I can look and tell that's not going to be factored. So opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's going to give me... 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 4 all over 2, which is 7 plus or minus the square root of 44 over 2. Well, 44 I think can be broken up because that would be 4 times 11, and that's a perfect square right there.
So I compare them up and I'm going to get 7 plus or minus 2 radical 11 over 2. That 7 can't be divided by 2, so I'm not going to do any um, reducing. I'm going to leave it just like that. All right, find the zeros of the function. Well, that means I need to set it equal to 0. Oops, I put a, put a plus sign there. I'm going to factor out a 7. I've got x squared plus 7. So what I think I'm going to do is just take that factor, the one with the x, x squared plus 7 equals 0. I'm going to solve this using the square root, so I'm going to subtract 7. Then I'm going to get x squared equals negative 7. Take the square root. And when I do that, I need to put my plus and minus, and I've got a negative underneath the radical, so that's going to become an i7. And that's my final answer. All right, 108. First of all, I know there's going to be an i, but I want to do a factor tree. That's going to be 2 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 9, and 3 times 3. So negative 108 is really negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And I want to pair them up. I have a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s. So the square root of negative 108 that negative 1 is going to become an i. I can pull a 2 and a 3 out. 2 times 3 is 6. That 3 doesn't have anybody to pair up with, so it's going to stay underneath the radical. On number 11, I'm just going to add like terms. 9 plus negative 15 is negative 6. 50 plus 6 is 56. And that's my final answer. I can't go any further. All right, this one is a multiplication. Make sure you're always looking at the sign in between the parentheses. I'm going to have to FOIL negative 1 times 9, negative 1 times negative 5i. 5i times 9. And 5i times negative 5i is negative 25i squared. And you need to remember i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So really, that's negative 25 times negative 1. What I'm really doing is going to be adding 25. So negative 9 plus 25 is 16. 5i plus 45i is 50i. And that's going to be my final answer. All right, on number 13, it looks like I have a lot of distributive property to do first. So that's where I'm going to start. I want to also be very careful with my signs. 2i plus 3i minus 5i squared minus 8 minus 2i. All right, again, right there, negative 5i squared is the same as positive 5, negative 5 times negative 1. Let's go ahead and combine our reals. 5 and negative 8 is negative 3. So I've done those two. And then 2i plus 3i minus 2i is 3i. Number 14, I want to use that graph to the right. How many solutions are there? 
there are no real, so there would be two imaginary. And I know there's no real because it's not crossing the x-axis. What is the minimum value? Well, there's my minimum. And if I go over there, the minimum value is 2. And is the discriminant, discriminant positive, negative, or 0? Well, it would have to be negative since I have imaginary solutions. All right, on this one, I want to... Um, I was supposed to be taken off. Um, I want to substitute. I've got the 4. I'm going to substitute that in. So I'm going to have 4 equals x squared minus 4x plus 9. Um, I'm not sure how this one is going to work out. We'll try it. We're going to subtract 4. And I'm going to get 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. Uh, are there any numbers that multiply to 5 and add to negative 4? No, 1 times 5 is going to give me 6, so that's a no. Negative 1, negative 5. That's also a no. So on this one, I would say no solution. All right, choose all the statements that are true. So it looks like we've got height and time. And right here is our x-axis. their y-axis. I said those backwards, but I was drawing y as I said x. Um, x and y. x is our time. y is our height. So it looks like um, the ball was kicked off a platform, and we have the graph right here. This part right here really wouldn't be part of the domain because you can't have a negative time. So th this is really what's happening. So this must be the platform right there. How high is the platform? Seven and a half, eight. It's kind of hard to tell right there, but it's between five and ten. How far did the ball land from the base? Hmm, how far? Well, there, there's no height. I think they probably meant we're going to just knock that one off. That one, I think, was typed in there incorrectly. How long did the ball hit after it was launched? Hit the ground. Well, it went from zero, and right there, it would have hit the ground. That's 15 seconds. Um, how long did it take... To reach its maximum height. Well, there's its maximum height. And if I go straight down, looks like around five seconds. Then is the discriminant positive, negative, or zero? Well, here's one of my zeros. Here's my other zero. Um, I've got two real solutions, so that's going to have to be positive. How can I tell? Two positives, two real solutions. So I, the discriminant has to be positive. All right, sketch a graph. So I'm going to have to sketch three graphs. with a positive discriminant. Well, that means it has two real solutions. So that has two real solutions. Um, I'll even write that down. Two real solutions. A negative discriminant is going to have no real or two imaginary. 
so it doesn't cross. And the zero discriminant is going to have one real. That means it's just going to touch one place. All right, and that is it.